Yo, what's up? This is Josh. Welcome to the video. Are your 808s wimpy? Are you crying yourself to sleep at night because your beats ain't slapping? Well, I'm here to help you out with that. Today, we're going to be going over the five keys to get your 808s to hit. These are sound selection, levels, EQ, effects, and different listening environments. You master these five things and your 808s suck, you should just quit. Just kidding. You should probably just watch this video again. It'll get you right. The number one cure to wimpy 808s is sound selection. My mom always told me if your ingredients are trash, that jambalaya is not gonna turn out the way that you want it to. But I promise this one thing is gonna save you so much time. So how do you choose the right 808 you might ask? A couple I would recommend are the Kenny Beats, the cave sample packs. Also, there are a lot of Nick Mira sample packs floating around. A lot of the internet money members have these kits. People like Cody. I would recommend, especially if you're just starting out and not making your own 808, to invest in some of these. If you're broke, just use the basic spins 808. You know that shit still slap. If you have Splice, go in the Murder Beats pack. There are a lot of good 808s on there. What I'm actually going to be using in today's tutorial is the Dump Truck 808. This is from the Ramzoid Drum Kit Volume 2. Shout out to Ramzoid for being a GOAT. The raw sound. Like, whoo! Like, already out the gate, just slapping hard. Now, step number two is leveling. What you really want to pay attention to is the level of your 808 versus your kick. A good rule of thumb, I like to keep my 808 around minus six to minus three, and then have that kick almost hitting as close to zero as possible. I find that this is the perfect little sweet spot because the kick still punches through, but you still get that body of the 808. But remember, there are no rules. Sometimes just turning things up will make it sound better. I think Southside said that. Use these as rules of thumb, but don't be married to them. So what you want to do is have the kick sitting on top of the 808. As you can see right here, kick's hitting about 0.67, 808 around minus three. It is clipping, but it's okay because that clipping is gonna help us just drive the soft clipper or the saturator on our master and it's gonna give it that little extra punch. I know a lot of people are scared of the red, but there are no rules to this music shit. If red sounds good, then you know, it just is what it is. And to get that maximum punch, you want the kick to be a little bit louder than the 808. Right there. That sounds pretty good to my ears. Now, the third trick to making your 808 slap is using EQ. Something you can do on a lot of these 808s is do a high pass. Now, what you want to do is take a high pass and put it to like minus 20, maybe even minus 19, 15. Now, the reason that you want to do this is because the human ear can't even hear that low, and most speaker systems can't even produce a frequency that low. So, what it's doing is taking up the amount of headroom that you have. And so, doing this allows you to just push it a little bit harder and it just helps it punch through more. Now, if you want to EQ some more of the mids in, EQing these mids helps out a lot because this is where it really shows up on phone speakers and laptop speakers. You can even do it to the kick as well. What you also need to do is carve out space for the 808. And what I mean by this is taking out all of the low end from about 150 to 200 hertz and below for all the other instruments to give space to that 808. If you don't do this, your mix is going to sound really muddy and those other instruments are going to suck the life out of your 808. Next step in making your 808 slap is adding effects. What I mean by this, things like distortion and saturation. What you're doing with saturation and distortion is adding a lot of mid-range harmonic frequencies. Something to keep in mind is adding harmonics creates more perceived volume. Even if it's not necessarily as loud, it's gonna sound louder. This will also help it really punch through on laptop and phone speakers. So you can take the saturator, if you wanna add the soft clip, just drive it a little bit to taste. You know, if you wanna get a really distorted sound, you can really crank it. I usually like to keep it just kind of right in here just to add a just to give it a little bit let's see distortion now something that you probably noticed is that this took out all of the low end in the 808 which is obviously not what you want make sure to look out for this because a lot of distortion plugins do this this is why i personally like to run my distortion as a parallel chain let me show you how to set that up so in ableton you would just hit command g hit that little button right there hit chain hit command d to duplicate and then you take off the distort. So I find that this just gives me a lot of control. See, so we can add a lot of that mid-range kind of frequency. See, so you can even EQ it to kind of take out that low end. You just want like, the range in here. What you're trying to do here is just add content in this mid-range, low mid-range kind of area. Now, adding these effects may affect your level a little bit, so make sure to compensate. A good plugin I would recommend is this soft tube saturation knob. I would run it in parallel mode, because if you don't see more you turn it up, the more of that low end kind of goes away, which is what we don't want. So you can tell this just sounds a little bit more muffled and low endy. 
So it's just adding a little bit of that kind of like crunch and crispiness. And this is gonna really help it punch through on laptop and phone speakers. The last effect that I need to mention is using a clipper on the master. When I tell you that this one thing is gonna make your 808s and kicks gel come together and slap so much harder, make sure to get that Q-tip and keep your ears open. There are a couple different ways to do this. I'm just gonna use stock plugins, but there are also plugins out there like JST Clip and Standard Clip that also do a really good job. One thing I like to do on occasion is add a saturator at just like one to one decibel on the master and turn on the soft clipper. And see like the second, like this is hitting, but the second you turn it on, it's just like attacking it. You know, I'm just making it come alive and be a fucking animal. Now, if the soft clip is off, you just wanna make sure to turn it on. That's really gonna help it punch through. Now, step number five to help you out with those Girl Scout 808s that you've been using is to listen. What I mean by this is to listen on different sets of speakers. Basically, find the worst speaker that you can possibly find. If your dad used the old radio to hang out in the garage and eat tacos too while listening to jams, then find that. If it's a little Bose speaker, if it's uh, your phone, you know, export it in the worst possible format, MP3, listen to it on the phone. And if it's still slapping, then you know that your mix is good. If it's not, it means you need to go back to these five essential steps and rethink what you did. You gotta do this because people aren't listening to your music on professional studio monitors. They're listening to it on their laptop or their AirPods or you know, any of these unoptimized sound systems. You gotta look out for your listener, make sure that 808 is still slapping so they can still get in the vibe of the song. Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you found any value from this, make sure to smash the subscribe and like button. If not, don't even worry about it. I'm still gonna be making videos and hanging out, but appreciate you watching. You guys keep killing it. Have an amazing week. I'll see y'all next time. Love you.